Hello boys, welcome back to another session of online video tutorials and this session is meant for class 11th biology students and this is meant for 26th June 2021 as we have been dealing with uh, chapter 1 for the last 3-4 days and this time around I would like to give the revision notes quick revision notes so that you can take a print out of this and keep it with you for future reference and this notes will help you to quickly grasp whatever we have been discussing for the last three four days like important concepts i would like to give at the end of every chapter once we discuss deliberate i would like to give a quick revision notes for each chapter of class 11th as well as class 12th so that you can have a quick a reference book before your board exam as well as this will be very useful for UPSC as well as NEET exams so here we go uh, we said uh, what is life life is unique complex organization of molecules that express itself through chemical reactions that lead to growth development responsiveness adaptation and reproduction the objects exhibiting growth development, reproduction, respiration, responsiveness and other characteristics of life are designated as living beings. So all living beings will have life and life will have certain characteristics, living characteristics or live characteristics. So what are the unique features? These are the unique features. First one is growth. We said that growth is addition of cells. So its number gets increased as the number gets increased the mass of the animal or plant gets increased so a multicellular organism increases its mass by mitosis cell division in plants growth continues throughout life in their uh, in their life because of presence of a meristematic tissue i said but whereas in our case in case of animals since there is no meristematic tissue the growth is restricted only to certain age. So unicellular organisms also grow by mitosis. We heard about uh, fission. Okay. And sometimes in some of the lower organisms, the mitosis itself becomes reproduction. So cell division and reproduction go hand in hand, I said. Living organisms show internal growth due to addition of materials and formation of cells inside the body. Whereas non-living organisms like mountain, boulders, crystals also grow but due to addition of similar materials to their outer surface. It is physical addition. So second characteristic is reproduction. This is one of the very important characteristics of living organisms because it maintains identity of the species. It helps in increasing the number of species, once one species. So it is the formation of new individuals of the similar kind. Reproduction is not essential for survival of the individuals. It is required for perpetuation of the population. Look at the word perpetuation. Then in sexual reproduction, two parents are involved to produce more or less similar kinds of individuals. In asexual reproduction, one parent. So in sexual reproduction, we require two parents. In asexual, one parent is involved. And the individual is a copy of the parent. It is a Xerox copy of the parent in case of asexual because same genome. Whereas in sexual reproduction, one set of chromosomes come from the male gamete. Another set of chromosomes come from female gamete. Fusion of these two will result in formation of zygote. So zygote has got two sets of different genomes. Hence, genetic recombination takes place. So varieties will be formed. In uh, case of... Uh, a sexual reproduction it occurs by fission, uh, fragmentation, regeneration, vegetative propagation, etc. And in unicellular organisms, growth and reproduction are synonymous, as I said just now. Many organisms like mules, sterile worker bees, infertile human couples do not reproduce. So their identity will be over with that generation. Therefore, reproduction is not an all-inclusive characteristics of living organism. However, no non-living object has the power to reproduce or replicate. And then comes the metabolism. In uh, metabolism, 
the sum total of all types of chemical reactions occurring in an individual due to specific interactions among different types of molecules in the interior cells is called metabolism. I can say as I have been telling you, metabolism is energy producing process. It is a combination of two steps. One is the anabolism, another is catabolism. And the catabolism plus anabolism is equal to metabolism. So basically in uh, metabolism, as I said, is a combination of catabolism and anabolism. In uh, catabolism, we say it is breaking, breaking of bigger molecules uh, to release energy like proteins are broken down into amino acids and same example we can quote for anabolism. Anabolism is addition, two amino acids join together and make a protein, amino acid 1 plus amino acid 2 giving rise to a protein. So AA1 plus AA2 giving rise to protein. Uh, similarly, we can say glucose gets oxidized to produce 36 ATP molecules. Look at this energy involvement. Hence, metabolism is a greater character of a living organism. And uh, whatever energy that is released during the process of uh, both catabolism and anabolism will be utilized for day-to-day -day activities. And the next character, consciousness. It is the awareness of the surroundings and responding to external stimuli. External stimuli may be physical, someone touches you, chemical because of your hormones, biological enzymes. Plants also respond to stimuli like light, water, gravitation, pollution. And I said one of the best examples that we can give is a touch me not plant. So all living organisms prokaryotic to eukaryotic respond to different kinds of stimuli. Human being is only organism who is aware of himself. So consciousness therefore becomes the defining property of living organisms. And lifespan, we discussed uh, the time period between birth and death is the lifespan. So every organism has got a definite lifespan. We discussed about ranging from one day, 24 hours to 2000 to 3000 years. Okay. So living organisms are therefore self-replicating, evolving and self-regulatory interactive systems capable of responding to external stimuli. So diversity in the living world or biodiversity is the occurrence of variety of life forms differing in morphology, size, color, anatomy, that is internal structures, habitats and habits. See, habitat and habit. Each different kind of plant and animal or microbe represents a species. So currently there are, as we discussed, 1.7 to 1.8 million living organisms known to science out of which 1.2 million are animals and about 0.5 million are plants. So we need to classify these and for this, first of all, first basic thing that we have to do is identification. After identification, we have to give name, nomenclature. After giving nomenclature, we have to go for classification. And then systematics is a branch of biology that deals with cataloging plants, animals and other organisms into categories that can be named, compared and studied. So basically the systematics is uh, on the basis of uh, evolutionary trends. It's not only the arrangement of uh, plants and animals and other microbes, based on the uh, based on the morphology and anatomy it is also evolution returns so identification is finding correct name and place and place of an organism in the system of classification it is done with the help of keys the yesterday only we discussed about the keys and the keys will have always a couplet and out of the couplet two statements one statement will be lead so lead helps us to pick up the evolution trend so this is carried out by determining similarity with already known organisms. And the nomenclature, of course, we follow the traditions of, uh, in case of plants, it is ICBN, International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. And in case of animals, it is ICZN, International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. And uh, 
the biological nomenclature will be always having two things binomial nomenclature we say it has got a genus and a species so there are certain set of rules to write that and these are all proposed by father of taxon we call linnaeus so mango for example mangifera indica so first write correct spelling and the first part represents genus mangifera is genus indica is species in that first letter of genus that is mangifera m m should be capital letter and species i indica i should be small letter and then underline both genus and species this is how you have to write a scientific name or binomial name and our own uh, we discussed again homo sapiens h should be capital s should be small letter sapiens so universal rules uh, we discussed already genus species and all that and then we go for the classification it is a process by which anything is grouped into convenient categories based on some easily observable characteristics so classification makes the study of organism very convenient and taxonomy the process of classification on the basis of external and internal structures along with internal structure of cell development process ecological information known as taxonomy and the taxonomical categories uh, each one is called the each rank is called taxon so the highest taxon in taxonomical hierarchy is kingdom we said and uh, the just below the kingdom there will be division just below that class just below that order below that family genus and species so the lowest taxon as we said is the species so species uh, are the group of organisms that look alike that live in a particular habit and interbreed among themselves to produce similar kind that's how we defined uh, species and uh, in uh, mango tree indica is species and the genus is mangifera similarly the genus we talked is a group of related species which resemble one another in certain correlated characters so there is a correlation like lion tiger leopard they are closely related species and so they are placed under one genus panthera similarly many genera will be kept under a family like we have got uh, solanum vitania datura all these will come under solanaceae family solanaceae because there are common features like brinjal family potato family tomato family okay and many families uh, will be kept under one order so families phalidae and canidae are included in the order carnivore so why they are included because all the animals eat non vegetable food carnivores and class a class is made up of one or more related orders the class dicotyledonae dicot flowering plants contain all dicots which are grouped into several orders like rolls polymenales renales etc and then finally we come to the in case of animals we call it phylum in case of plants i said it is called division like like we have got phylum cardata phylum uh, echinodermata like that so the term phylum is used for animals while division is used for plants uh, next all the phyla and the divisions come under kingdom so there are two kingdoms animal kingdom plant kingdom and to do all this hierarchy of classification we require the help of certain structures certain techniques certain procedures and those are called taxonomical aids the help in the classification so one of the best taxonomical aids is herbarium i said and you can also prepare in your own home i said so herbarium is place where dried and pressed plant specimens mounted on sheets are kept systematically according to a widely accepted system of classification the herbarium sheets also carry a label providing information about date and place of collection so english or local language can be used and the botanical name must be used family and of course your name because you are collecting the varieties and then you must have gone to many of the botanical gardens 
they are specialized gardens having collection of living plants for reference live plants you can see so you have seen in uh, mysore uh, i am sure you must have gone and of course uh, there are many famous botanical gardens one is the london one royal botanical garden in q of course in indian botanical garden is calcutta national botanical garden in lucknow and of course you must have seen in our own karnataka mysore uh, brindavan gardens and uh, and of course ooty kodai canal all these have got varieties of uh, plants and then museums biological museums are set up in educational institutions like colleges and schools for ready reference specimens are preserved in the containers or jars in uh, preservative solutions or as dry specimens like one we have got in our own lab in our biology lab and then zoological parks uh, these are the places where wild animals are kept again you must have seen hyderabad zoo you must have gone to mysore zoo and seen all the wild animals there and they try to create a very close natural habitat as far as possible and as i said key is the, the most important stru structure it is a taxonomic key it is an artificial analytical device look at that it is a analytical device having a list of statements with dichotomic table of alternative characteristics that are used for identifying organisms like yesterday if you recollect from your memory i said uh, we made a first statement have organism having dry skin okay yes or no then having skin whether the skin has got hairs or not next statement where dry uh, skin hairs with limbs then skin hair limbs and then any locomotory organs or evolution trends like that we started off with one statement that is a key and the key will have a couplet and the couplet will have a lead and the lead will take us to a particular organism so this is how each statement of a key is called lead separate taxonomic keys are used for each taxonomic categories like species genus family and keys are generally as i said analytical in nature so flora manuals monographs catalogs are some other means of recording descriptions so this is how we uh, use the uh, taxonomical aids in order to make a classification uh, you can make this uh, notes separate notes for for you and then every chapter i would like to give you a quick revision notes and this will help you to uh, particularly solve mcqs multiple choice questions which are asked in your upsc like zoological parks museums all this then uh, a taxonomical hierarchy there will be a lot of